Hey folks, I'm back again with another update on this crating. Uh, I started building this like about 10 months ago, I ordered it 10 months ago, it came in about 8 months ago and since then I've been kind of on a quest to make it, I'm not going to say the toughest crating out there because there's loads of folk upgrades on theirs. But I think I've done pretty much everything that I want to do to it at the moment so I thought I'd give you the update on what we've actually got here. So it was, it was, that's the right word, uh, it was a Creighton EXB and as you can see it looks pretty much standing on the outside. The wheels are giving it away a wee bit, there's a change there. They are Proline Badlands, uh, they're belted so they don't expand and balloon whenever you're at high speed. They are supposed to be only rated to 75 mil an hour, but I think that's just them covering themselves. I've pretty much upgraded nearly everything on this. There's very little armour left on the car. But I'm going to give you a quick rundown of all the bits that we do have here. So, let's see here. Let's lift this off. So, I have got, first off, the titanium chassis. This is some Scotch parts. It's a 3mm grade 5 titanium, so that's, I think they call it 6AL4V. It's, a, it's an alloy, titanium alloy. It's used by the military for armour plating and things like that there. It is tough, it's got a lot of spring to it, so it can take a bit of an impact. And I've been sort of watching this channel, RC Eskimo. He's had titanium chassis from Scotch Parts actually uh, for quite some time now. He's smashed living daylights out of his car and he says he still can't damage it. So I'm pretty good with that. Um, I know there are other chassis out there, it's not saying that they're not great, but I think I just wanted to go for this. I'm in the UK, the guy that makes these is also in the UK. It's Scotch Parts RC. I'll put a link below so you can actually get to this. Um, he made quite a lot of bits that are on this actually. He's got the chassis. Uh, you've got, let me just get to here. The chassis top plate that's on here. Uh, the drive shafts, the centre shafts in there. You can probably see them just get a better focus on it. Uh, a whole lot larger in diameter to the steel ones. So they don't kind of wobble and flex under high revs. Remember this? This one drive shaft here, if this motor's doing 50,000 RPM, that's only on a 3 to 1 sort of ratio down the way. Um, you still get, you know, sort of 17,000 RPM into what was quite a thin steel uh, drive shaft. They're never ever perfectly centred, so you do get a wee bit of a wobble on them, and that wobble gets amplified the faster it goes until you can see them, they move quite a lot, they end up hitting off the surroundings and things like that there. With the thicker shafts, they're titanium, and I know titanium has got a little bit of flex to it, uh, but not when it was that thick. These are solid, they'll, they'll not bend or anything. I know a lot of boys are using these for their speed run cars, uh, and those are obviously rotating at a whole lot of faster speed. I've also got the same shaft, uh, drive shafts going on the front and rear. Uh, the Scotch parts, again, a whole lot thicker, so hopefully it should actually, in theory, make it run a little bit faster. It should be a whole lot tougher because it won't bend. Um, longevity, titanium doesn't sort of last as long as steel for wear. Uh, and the Scotch parts even mention this. They'll, they'll say this whenever you're, you're buying it. You know, you do need to make sure you get the right grease in them and things like that there. And that would be a dry grease. Uh, one that's sort of based on Teflon and kind of waxy kind of feel to it. If you use that, then it doesn't tend to sort of pick up as much grit and dirt as, you know, some of the silicone grease and such like. Um, anyway, on to the other parts of this, uh, to beef up from the chassis, we've then got, I'll just get around to you, Vitaven or Vitaven, I still don't know what way they want to pronounce that. Uh, that's the rear diff, there's the same sort of uh, one on the front there. It's the dilt diff or bulkhead they call it. The differential's actually inside. I haven't done anything to the differentials other than strip them, rebuild them, uh, check the shims were all okay and put in different oil and it was 10k in the front and back and I think 50k in the centre, maybe 100k in the centre. Now it's a half million in the centre, it's 30,000 on the rear and 60,000 on the front. It makes a big difference, you don't tend to sort of spin out as much, although I don't really think I'd notice it because the tyres are belted. You don't sort of get that telltale one wheel sort of ballooning when you're turning a corner and accelerating. Um, other wee bits we've got to this, we've got quite a few wee bits from M2C. Uh, we've got the front and rear chassis braces, 
because pretty much they've been tested to destruction by nearly everybody and they don't break. Uh, I don't think I said tested to destruction there, but everything else sort of seems to fall apart in a bit. I do seem to be okay. Uh, I've also got rear tower braces from M2C as well. Uh, they're mounted against Scorps Parts titanium shock towers. Now, these are they're four millimetres thick. Right, I know that the original shock towers on this, you can see how thick they are there. The original shock towers on this were 5mm thick and they were 70 75 aluminium. Um, that is good, it's strong, all the rest of it, but it's not quite as strong as this. Even though this is thinner, it's probably near on twice the strength uh, as the other one. Um, I bought them just because he's only just released them. They are brand new out, you'll find them on his website. They fit the new EXB sort of geometry for the rear suspension arms. Front one's pretty much the same, because uh, there's no real difference there. But they changed where the shocks go on the rear when they brought out the version 5 and the EXB models. So this now fits that. So I'm quite chuffed, they're really nice. I did have to file them a wee bit, just around where they sort of meet on here, on both sides there. That's nothing really to do with the shock tower. Uh, it's a wee bit to do with the Vitavon casing because I tried these straight on, the original plastic ones, they fitted on straight away, but they were a wee bit tight on this and you had to give them a, a bit of a squeeze. I just took a wee file out, took a wee bit of an edge off it. Didn't take long actually, titanium's not too bad to file. It's a bit sparky, uh, but it does file down okay. Um, anybody that is working on this titanium, be aware, right, if you are doing anything, you can't just sort of hit it with a high speed drill or anything like that there. I had to drill out here. Uh, these are three millimetre holes it comes with to fit the standard sort of uh, shock mounts. The four millimetre ones I've got on now because these are M2C Racing's ones, uh, the standoffs they call them. It's a four millimetre bolt so it's a little bit stronger it's on there and drilling it out wasn't fun. I I broke the first drill and then I just went to, there was an engineering firm around the corner. I went to them, spotted somebody's lunch and he did it overnight for me and picked it up the next day. Uh, so I'm well chuffed them, they all fit really well. I've also got on the front of this, and this was something that held me up for a while, I couldn't get one of these front hinge pin holders that fitted with the EXB bumper. And I wanted to retain the bumper because the bumper's quite well engineered, it's, it, it's just well put together. These are available from Scotch Parts, they're 70 75 aluminium. They bolt on exactly the same as the plastic one from Armour does. You've got all your screw mounts in there, you can fit it, it's really easy to fit. To complement that, I also got, let me just see if I can get in here, the rear hinge pin holder. Now, I got this from Custom RC Upgrades. I've got to say, I'm really impressed by it. The, the metal work they've done on it, it's all polished and everything, so the finish is fantastic on it. It's really well made. Um, you'll get a link to that below. We'll try and put a link to everything below that we've got. You can just see in the corner there, oops, the titanium Ackerman plate there, that's also from Scotch Parts. Um, on top of that, I've got a few other bits and bobs, like the hot racing supply, the bar ends, and the actual bracket that it mounts into for the front and the rear there. I've got a carbon fibre top bar here. And I know a lot of folk like running without it, I kind of like running with it, I wanted the centre of the truck to be as strong as possible. kind of tried this before with the HPI Savage, found out if you're going to make the truck a wee bit tougher, then leave bits, you know, standard, let's see the suspension arms, they're all still the original plastic ones, because if this takes a really bad tumble then, if it's going to break, I'd rather something cheap broke off it. I don't want something breaking in the centre of it where it's a whole lot of work and hassle and stripped screw threads and all the other things that happen with a bad accident. Other parts that are on this, uh, still running the same engine mount that come, or motor mount that comes with the armour. I have put on, you can see them, that's plastic in there normally, so that's the hot racing version of it. And also the other side of where the, hang on, there we go, the other side of where the diff comes out there, that's, oops, that's normally plastic as well. Um, what we've managed to do is get that from Hot Racing. It fits a lot better. I've got the Max Amps, eh, not Max Amps, sorry, the batteries. I have the Max 6 uh, combo from Hobbywing. So it's a 1650 kilovolt motor. Uh, it's a 4985 size, so it's one of the bigger cans that you can fit onto this thing. I have put, and I had this on here before, but I've changed the fans on it. Um, this is from Yeah Racing. I have sort of, I took a wee 
bit of sandpaper and sort of cleaned up the fins on it just to sort of polish it up a wee bit. Somebody did sort of tell me that they had a problem with this because this wee bottom mount here is a flat plate and you can get a little bit of heat build up. So I did spend a lot of time sort of drilling holes out in it and sort of fixing it so it could breathe. I'll just turn it around and see if I can get a look at it. I don't know if I'll be able to get a view. Sort of, no. I can't really get a view in there, but there's lots of holes in underneath, all polished up, so it looks like it's actually fitted that way. But the whole thing's all polished now. Uh, I put the central fans on it because the previous fans I had from Gear Racing were only rated to, uh, I think, 7.2 volts. And if I run this at the proper setting on the Max 6, then it's running 7.4 volts, and I didn't really want to take the risk of a wee fire and melt something. So... I got these and then I also at the same time I upgraded this little fan here, shortened that wee wire also so it's not hanging out, uh, put the same wee sort of metal gauzes on the top just to try and stop the stones going down into the fan, but this fan's supposed to rotate 28,000 RPM so that should be blowing quite a lot of air. The mount that it comes from is a 3D printed one I got on the internet for I think it was 10 quid or something, but it actually gives you, there's a little bit of gap under here, normally that would be the fan in this section, so now that's a void that's in there. So when this is blowing, there's quite a lot of space for the air to move around in there, come out the side holes, cool it down. Should do a better job, uh, but I'll keep an eye and see how it, how it works. I've got Basher Queen's uh, ESC mount on there. The previous one was the armour one. It's not really, it's not designed for anything that big. Um, I had to just sort of stick something down on it and I had the cable tie around it, which I wasn't that happy with. It did the job, but... I'd rather it was fitted properly. This is now all properly stuck down and it's screwed in with the four mounts that fit underneath. I also get a wee space at the side where you can take this wee switch apart and then rebolt it to it so it's all fitted on properly as well. All the wiring's all hidden around there. I do need to sort of fix this wee bit of spaghetti down here at some point, but it's all in and out of the way. Um, I've got a new servo mount here. That's from Basher Queen as well. Now the reason I changed this from the EXB one is that the EXB one had plastic screws underneath it that the servo screwed into. What I wanted to do was I'm sorry, move it out of the way a little bit from the drive shaft and just pull it back over. Uh, let's see, over, where's my finger? Over that way. Uh, just by about a millimetre and a half and it gives a wee bit more access in there. So if I need to take that centre diff out then I don't need to unscrew too many things. Um, I've got a Power HD uh, S35 servo in there. That's supposed to be running at, I think it rather does run about 30 kilograms uh, when it's on the 7.4. It's certainly really quick. I think it's 0.07 of a second from throat to throat. Hot Racing steering link on there, along with Hot Racing's other steering parts in there. I can't get to it. Uh, other steering parts in here. Uh, they've all got ball races on them, that's why I chose it. Because a few folk have said, actually, Kevin Talbots, he built what he called was the world's most unbreakable truck, the world's toughest truck. And he's still got a problem with this, but it won't steer properly. Um, a few folk did see it and try that, but I've never seen him run the truck since then. And I've got to say, I want to see it because it was one of the things that kind of got me back into doing this. I had a Nero, uh, Arma Nero, and I couldn't get bits for it any longer, so I was kind of a bit wary to run it really fast. Uh, now I've got this, it's kind of, I get carried away. I just wanted to get it go faster and faster and faster. So it'll do about... It's still in a 19 tooth pinion just now, so it'll do about 60, 65 miles an hour. On the 21 or 22 tooth pinion, it should see over 70. Uh, especially as these tyres have a slightly larger rolling radius than the standard armour ones would. Uh, but we'll need to see. We'll see how we go. Uh, one other wee thing was waiting for ages for on this. Uh, let's see if I can get a good angle on it. And you can see the little aluminium hub inserts for the wheel. I've stripped two of these plastic inserts out, so I was waiting for these to come in. I have been waiting since um, the last October I put the order in. So it was like, I don't know, 10 months or something to get apart. Um, they're great, I mean, ProLine stuff's really, really good. The uh, problem is that if you're in the UK, trying to get parts for it can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it's just one of these things, it's locked down. There's all sorts of other problems going on anyway out there. A um, couple of other wee things, uh, I did sort of have to file a wee bit off on here. So these are normally sort of very triangulated, uh, both the angles are kind of similar. And all I did was just 
file away at that. I took a grinder, I ground a wee bit out, filed it, and now this is actually a version 4 chassis, but it's made so that it fits the EXB. The EXB has got a slightly narrower chassis, especially at the rear. If you look at my previous video, you'll see where the chassis doesn't come all the way to the edge of that slot. It used to, it used to end about there. It's a lot narrower at the rear, and that's why I think they've tried to give a wee bit of space for the rear suspension arms. Um, I wanted this type of rear chassis. It's a lot wider, it's a lot stronger. I didn't want to go down the route of, you know, just sort of sticking with the chassis I had. I wanted to get something tougher, and this does do the job. Now, you don't need to worry if you've got a crate in version 1 to version 4, then you can get this chassis, it fits on, everything fits totally. No problems or issues at all. If you do go for a version 5 or an EXB, then because of where the wheels, or the, sorry, where the suspension arm drops down, you don't get a full drop, so it's, it, it sits around about that height, which is still really good ground clearance, but you're kind of missing that much. So he has got, I know I spoke to him a few times in email, uh, the guy's called David, he's uh, working on, and he's going to release it any time now, a titanium chassis for the EXB in version 5, so everything fits and you do get a proper drop on here. Um, with this one here, I'm quite happy to have got it early. I made a couple of modifications on it, it now works totally fine. I've got a full drop front and rear on the suspension. There's no issues whatsoever. Uh, one other thing talking about the suspension. Um, I have changed a few things on the shock. Uh, I did mention in a previous video, I've put on big rock springs on here. Um, because I've got the Nero, I noticed that the shocks were pretty much the same. The springs were a lot thicker than the ones that come in the crating. So what I did was took one off, stuck it on the crate shaft and realised they do kind of fit. The only issue was they were a wee bit short when it came to on here. So what I did was I, I googled living daylights out of them and I did kind of guess this. It was the big rock was running, I think, 10 millimetres longer springs. So Hobby Sport, uh, sorry, Model Sport, had uh, some of these springs in stock, ordered them, fitted them on and ran them a few times just with the stock oil. Now, it worked fine in the stock oil. Uh, that was in there, I think it's a 1000 CST, but I did sort of think it was a little bit springy. I know East Tactics uh, has been doing a big thing on these springs, and he's running 5000 CST inside. I didn't really want to go to that, but what I have done, I, I know he actually runs quite a lot of preload as well, because he's trying to stop his car from getting any slap from high jumps, and I get it, that's what he's doing. I'm not kind of going as high as that. I am doing jumps and landing from great heights, but nothing what he's doing. Um, I didn't want to go for the 5000 CST because what happens there is that then puts an awful lot of strain on the shock, the shock rod that's here because instead of the spring taking all the shock out of it when it comes up the way then the shock rod's also taking some of it because it's got a, a resistance against the fluid in here if you get too much you land from too high a height then you are likely to bend stuff I have upped it and I've gone for 2500 CST and I'm running, I've looked at East Tactics, he's running a whole lot more preload on his, so that kind of works out why we run the 5,000, because it makes a difference. But at the moment, this is the sort of action I've got. So I'll push it all the way down, right? So it's it's slow enough to come back up. And it's also, it does help, I've got these M2C Racing shock tops here. Uh, what's inside here is a little, it's a little disc where your shock piston is. But on that disc, it's got more holes one way than it has... The other. So when you're pushing down on it, it just runs through, I think it's eight holes or something that it goes through. On the way back up, there's a different set of holes that then channel fluid against a little rubber o-ring on the inside, which causes friction against this. So they call it a zero rebound. Uh, there is no such thing as zero rebound, but they work really, really well and they do sort of reduce that rebound a huge amount. I've, I've got to give it a full run with these on it yet uh, to get a full try, but I am aware, I can see how it's working. I'm quite happy with the two and a half thousand in there. Um, other wee bits I was going to sort of show you. There was a battery tray mod that I did. Um, this was Bournemouth RC. Um, I'll just pull these out of the way. Now, when you run quite heavy batteries and you come down from a great height, if you're as good at landing as me, which is not, and you sometimes land upside down, things like that, the weight of the batteries in here is enough to rip the tray off sometimes. A few folk have done it and it's also ripped out wiring and receivers and things like that. They haven't done quite a bit of damage. So there was a lot of tips on the forum, Arma forum. Folk were saying to do this little mod here. Right, now what they are, 
I'll just show you, there's two of them in there, front and back. You could do more if you want, but I, you only need two on, you know, on this. Um, these are the cog T screws. It's like a self tapping type nut that sort of bites in. Uh, I've got two titanium bolts holding them in, and these are galvanized as well, so I'm not going to get any corrosion and like that. But you heat this little bit up here, put a screw, put a screw through the back end of it here, uh, heat it up. I just did it in the gas stove until it's warm enough, not too hot, right? You don't want to melt all the way through. But uh, heat it up, get it warm, push it in, and it will stick in. There's actually these sort of pins in it you can see there. That will stick in, bite right down, and then you screw the the nut or the bolts in from underneath, it pulls this whole battery tray down the way so you don't get any movement. If you land upside down, there's a huge metal piece here holding on everything. Uh, it should reduce any risk of that coming out. The other wee bit I did do is that these do end up sitting up a little bit. Uh, I, I measured it about just over a millimetre in height. So I got, this is just modeler's plastic card. Uh, you can actually just cut it with scissors. So there's actually four layers there. I ordered half a mil thick plastic card. And all you do is cut out the shape. Those wee square holes are where those screws there sort of fit up into. And it just means it's got a nice flat surface where your batteries are going. So you don't end up, I know a lot of folk are saying, I'll just put a yoga mat in. But a yoga mat is just rubber. And there is still quite a bump there on a heavy landing. You could over a period of time end up putting a little dent in your battery. And you don't want to put any dents in lipos. You don't want to do anything to them. Uh, or it's bye bye truck or whatever the car's next to anyway i think i've pretty much covered everything there i don't think there's anything i've missed um still got the hot racing hubs and everything on there you can see the alloy of that wheel now where the wheel hub is uh, i've got one other wee thing to do with this uh, it's something that i've noticed uh, online that people are talking about and it does need sort of fixed when they made the crate the the exp version they added this little red washer here so it surrounds the suspension arm and stops it from splitting. It's a great idea, but what they didn't do was they didn't lengthen the actual drive shaft. So when this is under full compression, there is a little risk of this popping out. And a few folk have damaged the little cups that it sits into. Um, the tip for it is that you just drill uh, this out so that the ball rod end sits inside it. And you still pop it back on, you know, so it all holds together. But it brings us back in by about a millimetre and a half, which is more than enough to accommodate for that to not slip out. Um, I'll get that done the next day or two anyway. That's an easy job. The rest of it was a bit of a pain in the neck. Uh, actually, it wasn't. It was quite fun. The electrics were a pain in the neck. Seeing you get big fingers, see putting all that together. That's an utter nightmare. Should have got one of my kids to do it. They've got tiny fingers, but never mind. Um, I think that's pretty much everything we've got there. I am waiting for, I'm still running the, let's see if I can get it in focus here, the plastic diff housings. They're all standard in the centre and the front and the rear, but I am waiting because it's been an order since January this year for the armour metal ones. They've just not released them yet. Uh, once they come, I'll then do a quick, it's not a strip down, but it's a quick and easy fix. I can put them back in. Uh, but other than that, I think that pretty much is the creating where I want it to be. I don't think there's anything else I could possibly do to it. Uh, I think I've pretty much, I'm not going to say bulletproofed it, um, but I think it can take a bit of a uh, impact now without sort of me going home with two polythene bags of bits. Well, one other wee thing, if you are going to be doing anything like this, be aware, um, all your crate and brochures and manuals and things like that, they always tell you, use red Loctite on any metal to metal screw. Like, don't go anywhere near this thing with red Loctite. You may as well weld the part on because in most cases it sticks okay. In some cases it just doesn't come off, even if you heat it and all sorts of things. So I've got red Loctite in one place and it's here. It's on the M2C hinge pin holder because you don't want that to come off and they actually say make sure you use red Loctite on it. So that's the only bit I've got it on. So try and avoid it if you can. Uh, use green or blue or whatever I've got, but not the red stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much me for now. That is the armour. Uh, it's all done. Set up. All I need to do is go and take it out and smash it a wee bit. Thanks very much for watching us. Uh, if you liked it, please hit the like. Um, if you want to subscribe, please do, because I'm going to put more videos up and a few of this getting sent. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much. And share this as well if you can. Thank you. Bye-bye.